Welcome back to the channel. In today's long-form deep dive, we're taking a close and structured look at the current state of Lake Powell's water level as of mid-November 2025. We will break down the seasonal curve of this year, compare it to previous years, shown on the official chart, analyze why the lake behaved the way it did month by month, and what the final part of 2025 suggests about operational patterns, inflow timing, and release schedules. This analysis stays strictly within reservoir mechanics, runoff timing, hydrological behavior, and management operations. Nothing more. Lake Powell's current water level, as of November 16, 2025, stands at 3,544.29 feet above mean sea level, which places it 155.71 feet below the full pool elevation of 3,700 feet. While this number might initially appear low, the more meaningful insight comes from comparing how this year's curve behaves relative to previous years displayed on the chart. The blue 2025 line begins the year at a modestly low elevation near the 3,570-foot mark, which reflects a winter pattern in which minimal inflow meets steady, controlled outflow. During this time, evaporation is reduced, so the lake level remains mostly stable during the early weeks of the year. However, this balance shifts as we move into late winter and early spring. From January through March, the curve shows a clear downward trajectory. This early seasonal decline is entirely expected, as upstream inflow remains weak while releases from Glen Canyon Dam continue at normal operational levels. The key observation is that 2025 entered this period without the stronger buffer seen in years like 2020 or even 2023. At the same time, the rate of decline mirrors what we observed in years such as 2024 and 2022, though from a slightly lower starting point. By March, the blue line begins to flatten, suggesting the first hints of early snowmelt entering the system. These small pulses of inflow usually come from warming at lower elevations, but the incoming water still isn't enough to surpass downstream requirements, so the lake continues its gradual slide through April. As the season transitions into spring, the behavior of the lake becomes especially important for determining how the year will shape up. Throughout April and early May, the water level hovers toward the 3,540 to 3,550 foot range. This area represents the lowest pre-runoff position Powell has reached since 2022. The lower the spring starting point, the harder it becomes for the reservoir to build strong gains during the runoff surge. Even though we see slight flattening during this period, indicating that inputs are rising, they do not fully counter the releases. When we compare this behavior to previous years, it becomes clear that 2025 resembles a moderate runoff year, not weak enough to reproduce the extreme declines of 2022, but far from the robust recovery seen in 2023. The most defining moment for any Lake Powell water year is the early summer rise, and 2025 did deliver an increase, though it was modest. The blue line climbs noticeably during late May and June, carrying the lake from the mid-3,540s up to roughly 3,560 feet at its peak in early July. This rise confirms that runoff did arrive, but the magnitude of the gain, roughly 15 to 20 feet, places 2025 well behind the peaks of 2023 and 2024, both of which surged dramatically higher. The shape of the 2025 rise suggests that inflow came in a relatively narrow window, peaking quickly and then tapering off. After reaching that early July high point, the lake maintains a short plateau before beginning its late summer decline. This behavior hints at a year where snowpack was present, but not abundant enough to produce a sustained period of elevated inflow. Once the runoff pulse passed, the lake resumed a predictable decline through July, August, September, and October. This downward slope appears smooth and consistent, mirroring typical high-demand months when hydropower releases increase and tributary inflow weakens significantly. The absence of abrupt drops during this period suggests stable dam operations, with no sudden changes in release policy or unexpected upstream events. While the curve is similar in shape to 2024's and even resembles parts of 2023, the absolute elevation is consistently lower, reflecting the lack of a strong annual rebound. Viewed in this context, the decline is normal, but the starting point is what keeps Powell positioned in the lower end of its recent historical range. 
By the time we reach mid-November 2025, the lake has settled around 3,544 feet, which marks the lowest point of the year. What stands out is how closely this position mirrors the late year level from 2021, a year that preceded the sharp drop of 2022. The fact that 2025 tracks near the 2021 band suggests that Powell remains in a multi-year pattern of low but controlled stability. There is no indication of a rapid uncontrolled descent, nor is there evidence of a strong upward recovery trend. Instead, the curve's steady flattening at the end of the year reflects a balance between lower winter releases and the slight increase in baseline inflow that often appears during the cooler months. It is a pattern of equilibrium rather than growth, one that keeps the reservoir hovering in a narrow band of elevations. In comparing 2025 to the five earlier years displayed on the chart, a clear hierarchy emerges. The highest curve remains 2020, which towers above the others with sustained elevation throughout that year. Below it sits 2021, which held moderate levels before slipping into the multi-year decline. The lowest curve is unquestionably 2022, which represents the sharpest and most dramatic drop of the set. Then come 2023 and 2024, both of which produced notable rebounds thanks to stronger spring inputs. Into this context, 2025 fits squarely in the middle. Not a crisis year, but not a recovery year either. It behaves like a reservoir reacting to moderate upstream input and steady operational release demands. The overall impression is that Powell has stabilized into a low baseline zone that reflects the cumulative impacts of several years of lower-than-average starting elevations. Looking ahead into the early months of 2026, Powell's November position offers some clues about what might happen during the winter period. At 3,544 feet, the lake typically enters a seasonal zone where changes are subtle. Winter inflow is usually modest but reliable, and outflow tends to be managed toward predictable winter targets. The gentle flattening of the curve in November suggests that the lake may remain relatively stable as December approaches. Historically, Powell rarely experiences steep winter drops when it is already at low elevation. Instead, it often settles into a slow, steady pattern that persists until spring runoff begins to influence the system once again. While the specifics of next year's rise will depend entirely on snowpack availability, the current state of the curve hints at a winter of relative equilibrium, rather than major motion in either direction. And that brings us to the conclusion of this deep analysis of Lake Powell's 2025 water level. Throughout the year, Powell followed a pattern that signals moderate runoff, predictable releases, and a continuation of the low elevation balance the reservoir has been tracking for several years. Although the lake remains far below full pool, its behavior this year was controlled, stable, and consistent with seasonal expectations. If you'd like a similar deep dive on Lake Mead or a combined system-level analysis of both reservoirs together, feel free to request it. If you enjoyed this type of long-form breakdown, don't forget to subscribe for more detailed water level and hydrological analysis videos.